Welcome to the first episode of me converting my 1970s Beetle to electric. So I'm gonna catch you up to date and explain this project before we jump in. As a lot of you may know, three years ago, I converted my 1973 Volkswagen camper van to electric after many issues with the original engine. It was super fun and I learned a lot of what did work and what didn't work so well. I've since driven it over 5,000 miles, including my very ambitious trip the end of last year across the States, ending in a pretty catastrophic breakdown in the infamous ice storm that hit the US. It's now in my friend's workshop, awaiting repair and ready for an exciting upgrade to solar power, but that'll be a whole nother series, so subscribe if you're not already. On a side note, in this phase of mine and Raya's life, we had originally planned on being in Costa Rica and making vlogs of us building our jungle treehouse home in the eco village that we bought land in. But after our eventful drive in our school bus down through Central America and then getting married there last year, we ended up getting pregnant much quicker than expected and we've had to adjust our timeline a bit and we found ourselves back in the UK in the lovely seaside town of Brighton with a community of friends who I actually grew up with and also all happened to be on the baby train as well. So a couple of weeks ago our little baby boy Neo arrived and it has been an unbelievable experience and honestly the craziest adventure ever. We are documenting that whole journey over on our couples channel and I'll link that below. Anyway knowing I'll be staying put and nesting with the family for a while I wanted to to take what I'd learned from my camper van electric conversion and plan another electric vehicle conversion that I could get stuck into here in the UK. And I thought what could be better than the equally iconic and smaller brother to the VW camper van, the VW Beetle. At Volkswagen, we don't worry about how our car looks, we worry about how it works. The Beetle was perfect for hippies. It was the exact opposite of the cars their parents liked. Plus, it was easy to maintain and it could last on those long California road trips. And then Hollywood stepped in. Introducing Herbie the Love Bug in 1968. I've always wanted a Beetle, but I never dreamed I would own one, let alone make it electric. So before launching into all this, I wanted to meet some others who had experience here in the UK and reach out to Richard Morgan, Moggy, over at Electric Classic Cars. I'm Richard Morgan, AKA Moggy, and I'm the founder of Electric Classic Cars, where we take classic cars like this and electrify them. He is a bit of a legend in the EV space, and he invited me over to check out his workshop. Alongside our visit, he strongly recommended I get some official training on EV safety and maintenance after he had watched my camper van conversion series. So I persuaded my friend Steve to join me, and we headed to a tiny town in Wales to start this adventure. Okay, so before I go and get Steve and head to Wales, I just wanted to shout out this company that we teamed up with and are currently helping us out with our car situation. Obviously, we've arrived in the UK, we don't really wanna drop a huge amount of money buying a new car, but we did want a safe, reliable new car, electric obviously, and I found out about this amazing company called On2. They are an electric car subscription service. It's a pretty affordable monthly fee that includes like the insurance and everything. You can actually switch to different cars depending on what your needs are. And uh, yeah, it's month to month, which is amazing rather than having to do like a multi-year lease on something. So this gives us so much flexibility. It's actually been the dream scenario. So if you want to check it out, I'll link it below. We've got a little code you can use for a hundred pounds off. Right, let's go and get Steve. Okay, today me and Steve have made our way to Wales in my new electric car to visit a company called Electric Classic Cars. We came up here actually two days ago and before we've come to this workshop, we did a course at Newton College in this little town in Wales and we both got IMI EV Level 2 qualified. We're basically electrical engineers now. <laughs> But we did have to sit a proper exam. We did a we? proper exam. We went to yeah. college. It's no, right. going back to school, basically. Yeah. We had to re like study, revise, sat in a proper exam condition. Both passed mm -hmm. with flying colours. What did you get on your test? 100%. <laughs> yeah. Dan not. Yeah. And Steve has never done any electric stuff, car stuff before. Never. Basically got an A. 
Apparently it's an A star. A star. I've got 87%. 87%. Yeah. So anyway, we're really excited. Hopefully we get to like ride around in some of the cars mm. today and uh, see the workshop, get inspired. It's gonna be a good day. Okay, we've, uh, we've met Richard, Moggy. Hello. He's gonna show us around. What are your new projects you're oh, working on? Oh, my race car. Oh, yeah. my death trap. <laughs> I've, I've yeah. got a uh, thousand horsepower, um, single seater, a race car I'm building to go to Pikes Peak in the States. Oh, wow. Uh, it's a thousand horsepower Tesla motor. We're gonna start with a thousand horsepower anyway, and might go up. So that's a tubular chassis. Uh, we've got, uh, we're just stripping it back now because it's gonna go off a powder coating, so it's not much to see. But it has a Tesla motor in there, um, battery pack there, battery pack in the side to so a single single seater. So, but if you want to follow this build, just check out our YouTube channel. So oh yeah, yeah, I'll link complete build on this one. I'll link them below, and you can check out all the, the <laughs> epic stuff they're doing. This is my race uh, project, and this has been spawned from the fact that that's my this daily lot. driver. Yes. So that has 600 horsepower. That's yeah. to 16 miles an hour in 2.6 seconds. Wow. And that's a daily driven car. If I start modifying this any more to make it like awesome on a track, it's going to be detrimentally taking away from the practicality of the car. Yeah. So I don't want to do that. And I thought I'll start another one from fresh and just do a race car. So nice. this is my most exciting project. So that's wow. the motor. This is a performance motor. So this is a performance large uh, drive unit. It's about 600 horsepower. And as I say, it's good enough for 0-16, 2.6 seconds. But I wouldn't be able to put this in my, uh, something like this in my vehicle, would I? No, no. You've seen the size of the tyres? So if you so That's like over double a normal Beetle tyre width, well, isn't it? A normal it? Beetle tyre is probably like that. Yeah. <laughs> Just... take this Beetle for a spin. Is this the fastest Beetle in the world as well? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> Everything's got to be the fastest something. Bro, you are right. I'm, I'm actually right. quite nervous, mate. Traction control on or off, boys? Uh, let's go on, I reckon. On? <laughs> on. Right, well, so if it's off, you'll get, then you'll power Spin sliding, out. right? Yeah. yeah. Well, if I switch it no, off... No, you choose, you choose. If whatever I, you think. If I switch it off, we wouldn't go anywhere. <laughs> oh, because you'll just be like so wheel spinning. Down there, yeah. if I switch it off now, and if I put my foot down... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> it's a bit too wet for that silliness. Wow. So if you're in dry and you're doing that, you're just you just get you're just doing burnout. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On dry, yeah. we would literally we would really? be Wow. It's 0 to 16, 2.6 seconds. And what's 0 to 60 on the Land Rover? 3.8, I think it is. I mean, so, Still re absolutely ridiculous. This is like hypercar. If you drive normally like this, yeah, yeah, yeah. at any one time, you can just put your foot down and that's the way you go. So. Woo! Yeah. Okay, we are going to nip out for a little ride with Moggy in his VW bus bay window. This is, is this, what year is this? 6970. Okay, a little bit, a little bit older than my one. Anyway, we're going to go for some lunch, but it's going to be fun. I'm excited. Uh, but to drive it, it's just, uh, there's no, you, you also have a gear stick. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So for me, I've got a Tesla motor in here. So you, no transmission, no No gearbox. transmission, I've got... Uh, kind of jealous. Yeah, it's really 450 nice. horsepower um, oh motor in the back. Wow. Not that I ever use that, yeah. but I do have traction control as well. And he's still got original, no power steering. Yeah, I've got power steering. You That's have? what this is here. Oh, so my wife drives it a lot, so yeah. uh, I thought I'd put the power steering in. Um, yeah, if you boot it. <laughs> oh my god, you're joking! Are you joking? Wow. Oh my god. I have word. wheel span mine, but this is definitely <laughs> next level. This is definitely next level. <laughs> oh my god. Unbelievable. Uh, the, your battery pack's in the uh, oh, So that, you've still got luggage space there, but your battery pack is that black box there. Yeah, love this. So good. This is the Defender. It's 100 kilowatt hours, 60 kilowatt hour battery pack in the front, and that just bolts into the existing engine mount. 40 kilowatt hours in the rear, and then this one's got a Tesla motor mounted in the middle. How long is your waiting list for clients? Because well, I was got... chatting to Michael at EVUS, he's like, yeah, we're five years yeah. out. Yeah, uh, we're about two and a half. Wow. Uh, we've got 68 cars in the order book, and we're expanding this year about another, say, 100% expansion, wow. so we're taking the workshop wow. that way. 
Wow. So this is what goes out with the kits, as well as the battery boxes and the motor mounts and everything to bolt in and things like those, battery boxes and cradles there sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is what goes out. So all the cables are the right length. Yeah. They've all got the plugs all done on them. Yeah, yeah, I'm so serious, yeah. Mount, mount them in the car with a cable tray and same for the low voltage loom and plug it in. It's all pre-programmed. Your kit's a big part of the business. Yeah. yeah. Next, we looked at a beetle Moggy and the team were working on to get some inspiration for my build. So this is the control box. This um, just mounts the old gear stick, if you like. And in there, you've got your reverse neutral drive. You've got your fan speeds, because obviously there's no mm. fan now because the air cooled yeah. engine's gone. Uh -huh. So you've got a, a two-speed fan for demisting and then also the heater on and off. Really? There's your rear battery pack. So this is going to be the same in yours. Yeah. So it, uh, mounts behind the back seat in the luggage space. And then you've got your main high voltage coming on the side. And this is the front battery box. There's a mounting plate that it mounts to. In an oval, the fuel tank is very small. Uh. In yours, you've got a slightly bigger fuel tank, but equally different shape. So what we do is we have a, an adapter plate. Just to standardise like the... We standardise then the, yeah. the battery box mount. So your, your front box and your rear box look exactly like this. Um, but your motor's different, obviously, because you're going to have a hyper yeah. So this is a Land Rover Defender 90. Rag top, got a Tesla motor uh, underneath, but it's mid-mounted. So essentially, Tesla motor normally runs the uh, rear wheels, if you like. But what we've done is we dropped it down, turned it to 90 degrees, put it up between the chassis rails, and now it runs rear prop and front prop. And then there's a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack in the uh, front and a 40 in the rear. Let's go for a spin. So normally in a Land Rover, you've got a transmission tunnel that comes up here uh -huh. with right. gear sticks and stuff like yeah, that, yeah, and also yeah. handbrake uh, lever here. We don't need any of that, so I've flattened the floor out and got a third seat in the middle. So that's really practical. Right, let's get rolling, rolling, rolling. Forwards. This is the most bizarre thing I've ever experienced in my life. It's pretty crazy. Because Defender, it's just like, so loud and yeah, chuggy, it's like a tractor. Right? It's like agriculture yeah. almost, you know. And the other thing is, I mean, we can do agricultural if you like. I mean, we can go off road. Yeah, for sure. <coughs> so we go what? down here, for instance. <laughs> 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 uh, it's got hill descent mode, so my feet are off the pedals. No way. Wow. That's my feet off the pedals. Wow. So it just because the regenerative braking of the motor yeah. it just manages your, your descent. So you're not going to start slipping down somewhere too bad. Yeah. Nice at the back, you can get Especially on grass. Very quiet. It's, it's just, it doesn't feel like It's so ridiculous, isn't it? Really I'll tell you what else doesn't feel like the end of this. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Are you joking? I knew it was coming, but I just wasn't ready. I just wasn't ready. Okay, look, I thought it was going to be fast. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be that fast. All my cars have to be fast. That is Outrageous. That is outrageous. That's like Outrageous. a roller coaster. Outrageous. 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 This might be the funnest, this is the, the funnest Land Rover I've ever been in my life. Yeah. I think it's the funnest car I've ever been in my life. Oh my god. It's just so unassuming. Yeah. It's a full on sleeper. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's from the front to the back, it's yeah. like from the outside, it just looks like uh, it just looks like a Land Rover. People are just, I'm sure. Do you want to drive it? Yeah. Go on, you so drive it, okay? Oh, oh the, the, I tell you, the funniest ones are motorbikes, right? Oh my god! Because because it's an open top, you can kind of hear motorbikes yeah, and you yeah, can yeah, see yeah. them. They've got full visibility all the way around. Like... When they uh, you know come up behind you, and you can hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was a bike up my bum, and then you kind of like uh, you wait for the straight, and you can hear them changing down and like. Nee, nee, nee. And then all of a sudden, you just boot it, and you <laughs> you go like this, and, the, and you can see them in the mirror going like this. <laughs> going, What's going on? <laughs> That's insane. Oh. <laughs> I'm scared. Yeah. Easy on that pedal. I'm really. gonna go. <laughs> Please. I've only got a little slap belt on. Yeah. And they're very gentle on the throttle. Ooh. Okay. Okay. 
And if you yeah. are ever going to squirt it, make sure that the wheels are pointing, pointing forwards before you yeah, squirt I it. I don't know if I want to squirt it. <laughs> Which way? Just the same way we used to go. Down here? Down here, yeah. yeah. So you only ever want to squirt it in the square straight line. Yeah. Like Jeez. Sorry. <laughs> Louis. I'm sorry. Easy on the pedal, bro. Sorry. Check out your foot on the brake to change Alright, Steve's having a little go. Foot on the brake and uh, go uh, forward. Oh, yeah, this button, yeah. And there then you go. Very foot. gently press yeah. the throttle. Oh, my God. It's scary. It's, it's scary. No, it's scary. <laughs> it's really scary. I like the throttle, very responsive. So I like it like this, but for first time drivers, it's a little bit of a handful. Like, it is, like, I've never really been scared of the car before. <laughs> like, I've been, I haven't. This is the most scared I've ever been, but also excited at the same time. <laughs> Like, it's just unbelievable. It is unbelievable. <laughs> I love your reaction didn't have any swearing. Usually it's just full of bleeps. I was <laughs> just oh. screaming. I think I was just screaming. I couldn't compute. I just couldn't compute how fast uh, that was. It's like, but it's so well, funny because you, 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 I was expecting you know, expecting it as well and you think it's going to be yeah, really, was, really fast. I was preparing myself. But, but then you're the, like, it's just, it's just like nothing, nothing you've ever experienced before. No, no. I don't know if it got caught on camera, but Louis literally... <laughs> Great! <laughs> <laughs> so good. So good. Unfortunately, we've come to the end of our trip here. Thank you a lot. No Moggy, worries. For showing us around, taking us out in the cars was unreal. Your, is your adrenaline like starting it's to calm uh, down di a bit, dilute yeah. a little bit in your blood now? It has, it has. But uh, yeah, super inspiring. And uh, we've been chatting a little bit, trying to plan out the Beetle conversion. I'll update you on that when we have some solid plans. But I'm really, really excited to start on my next EV conversion. And uh, yeah, if you haven't, go and check out Moggy's channel, Classic Electric, wait, Electric Classic Cars. Electric Classic Cars. Uh, I'll link channel. them below, yeah. And uh, check out some of the conversion they're doing. It's pretty epic. We got back from our trip to Wales and I started searching for the perfect car to convert. After a few weeks on Facebook Marketplace, I found a 1970s Beetle for sale, only 30 minutes away. So me and Steve went to check it out. Hey. Here we go. What are you saying? First impressions. Yeah, I do like the colour, bro. I do like the colour. <laughs> they're so little, man. They're I wicked. I like how mate, little they are. Wicked. Bro. I like, I don't think you see this colour, man. I think you're right. Very unique. It's very it. unique. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Is that right? Should, Should jump, jump in? in? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, take it for a little spin. Oh, I'll get that, yeah. What year is it? 17. Nice. What's your initial thoughts, Louis? I love it, man. Yeah? Because obviously you weren't super sure about the colour. But now I've seen it in person, I'm like, it's I'm, really unique. I'm more convinced on the colour now of being <laughs> Yeah. When we were... Nice. I'll show you the thing. So it's literally... Nice. Steve, it looks like the whole undersized has been uh, sprayed with the, the stuff in it. Raptor, yeah, there is, a, there, is, there is a little bit through here. There's a bit of rot through here, for sure. That, that, probably, the wheel that probably needs attention, for sure. It's pretty something, bro, to be honest. It is hard to tell, isn't it? When it's all wrapped like that. It's hard to tell, it's hard to tell what's underneath it. Yeah. So you might get it up and around and start poking holes in it. 
but it looks like it's been looked after. It runs really, really well. It's all good, like, mechanically. Yeah. So it didn't take much convincing. I bought the Beetle there and then and took the first step in making this dream a reality. This is so much fun. Oh my gosh. This is gonna be so exciting to convert. Oh yeah. Okay. Wow. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> I have no idea how long this is gonna take this project, but I'm excited to take you all along on this journey. I don't know if any of you ever had these like dream cars that you wanted as a kid and kind of forgot about them. But this is one of those for me. I always was just fascinated by beetles. So I want to drive the beetle around a little bit with its current combustion engine so I can compare how it feels once we've done the conversion. Uh, obviously, I did that with the camper van and it was just miles better in every way other than the time it took to charge up which I'm assuming is going to be the same issue with this but we're not planning on doing any mega road trips uh, this is definitely going to be just a fun run around town car a lot of you may think I'm crazy for getting a working beetle and I should have just bought one with a kind of broken engine but I kind of wanted to find a really good condition one. And luckily we stumbled across this and it's pretty good. So I'm gonna take out the engine, sell that, and uh, yeah, start the conversion. So as I'm planning out the rest of this series, please comment below on specific things you wanna know, maybe certain things I didn't go into enough detail with in the last build with the van. And if you've got any helpful tips or suggestions of how I could improve my process or my technique of uh, doing the build. Also, I'd love to hear from you because obviously this is all new to me and I think that's one of the exciting things about kind of uh, doing DIY projects is you're not gonna get everything right, but you're gonna learn so much when you just dive in the deep end. So obviously I'm coming in with more knowledge than I did last time and I've got the very basic kind of EV maintenance qualification now, which I probably want to continue doing and kind of go up to the different levels. But I am just so excited to be starting on this. I think in the next episode, I'm going to pick up the Tesla batteries. I've managed to source some on Facebook Marketplace. And uh, yeah, and then we'll drop the engine out. I've got my dad staying with me for the next week or so hopefully because we're going to need some help with the baby and uh, the bonus of that is uh, I can rope him into helping me drop the engine and tinker on the car which I'm sure he's going to love. Mm -hmm.